What's up everyone? Uh, Justin Gianni coming at you here from North Carolina, Zone 7B as far as growing um, USDA zones go. It's early May, uh, I don't know, maybe the 10th or 11th or something like that. And it, uh, <laughs> we've had a couple days where it was really cold weather, even got down into some frost temperatures. So it's been kind of interesting here in North Carolina because we're not used to having weather that's like that in May. We're used to having pretty warm weather, used to being safe, having all of our plants in the ground. So you know, it's been an interesting challenge for us. I've been using my little poly greenhouse uh, that I bought off Amazon, cheap little thing, just to keep seedlings in and keep stuff warm. I've been really interesting, like I said. I try to do stuff on a budget, at least, you know, try to make sense. I'm not trying to grow a $300 tomato. I'm trying to grow as much food as possible, provide my food, my family with as much food and medicine as possible, you know, trying to be able to uh, get as much of our nutrition from the ground. I'm gonna go check out the greenhouse, see what I need to shuffle around and see if um, I need to be pull some, pulling some plants out. I might have to check the weather and see if we have any cold weather come in. And obviously I have to make that decision when I shuffle these plants around uh, whether a uh, certain plant needs to stay out because it's going to get overheated in the greenhouse or if maybe it's a plant that likes hot weather it needs to stay in a little bit longer and get a little bit stronger before it grows in the ground obviously all those plants i'm talking about are going to be my um, annual vegetables and, and fruits that i'm growing every year I'm not necessarily the perennials because those are in the ground and those kind of stay where they're at obviously those are important also but just something that we don't need to worry about every once in a while we'll throw a blanket or something over them but we're not going to be throwing a greenhouse over those um, especially somewhere as warm as North Carolina. All right, so it's uh, it's pretty bright out here. So I don't know if uh, it's gonna be hard for you, everybody to see everything, see if the camera's able to focus on stuff. But this is just my little poly greenhouse right behind me. It's really small. Um, it, can o it only has like two or three shelves levels in it, um, but I can stick a bunch of stuff in it. And just being able to stick a few things in it like that is really helpful whenever we get a frost. I definitely recommend going and looking these up online. They're, I, I can't remember how much I paid for it, but it was pretty cheap. It was definitely worth, um, the 60 or $70 that I spent for it. Um, yeah, hopefully it doesn't end up as trash and get torn like a lot of people say, but I put mine up against a wall and tied it down and put rocks around the bottom so it doesn't blow away. And I think that um, that's really helped um, get a good, you know, extension of its life out of it compared to what a lot of, you know, plastic junk. So let's go ahead and look at some of the plants that I have stored in the greenhouse or I've been kind of taken in and out of the greenhouse. My wife just got home, so the dog's really excited. Hey, stay. Sit. You gonna sit on the step? Stay. Yeah. Stay. You excited? Is the rooster being annoying? You wanna go see her? Okay, go see her. Gone. All right, so back to looking at the plants after that interruption. Um, well, I pulled a few things out. Um, so I guess let's just look at what's in here right now and then we'll kind of go from there. So um, we definitely have some peppers still in here. Um, those look pretty short, but I like to pluck the very top of them uh, so that they leaf out lower uh, and just get a little bit better leaf structure a little bit of better stem structure and a little better fruit production later, later on. These are doing well in here and even though they look dry, um, that's actually, I mean, it's a pepper. They, they handle the heat, so it's not such a bad thing. Um, and then these plants grow in here. This is a, called a, I'll bring it out into the sun. It's called a tomori, tomorillo. Um, it's like a, I would say it kind of looks like a tomatillo, but is a sweeter, um, I, I might not have the husk and it, it's kind of an orangish, sweeter, more, almost like citrusy flavor to it. Um, well, I have a f bunch of the stuff in the ground already, um, but this is just kind of my backup supply of plants. We have our, uh, sorry about the wind and sorry about the sunlight. We have our artichokes Some those are just leftovers. I really need to pot those up and give them to somebody so they don't go to waste. Um, various types of squash. Um, just some other trees I have left in here that are still in pots growing. 
that just they look happy in here so I leave them uh, one is uh, on the left that is an olive tree that's an avocado tree grown from seed um, then we just have you know various other things peppers um, more cuttings uh, fig cutting I think I already went over that various squash uh, pepper plants eggplant tomatillo squash so all these are doing really well they they like the heat they like the warmth um, in the very back there's in the center of the screen right there that's a roselle um, all these things really like the heat down below i'll see if i can get it amongst the weeds down there that is a uh, lemon gum or lemon eucalyptus it's supposed to be really good for um, dealing with mosquitoes you know you probably have to have a thousand of the plants but those things do really well with heat i also have these plants that i've been uh, pulling in and out from the indoors from a room in my house with a window they are growing under a gr grow light right now these are fresh just sprouted seedlings um, obviously some of the trays haven't even come up all the way um, and i just like to be able to control the environment and the temperature as you can tell uh, not very good germination rate with this tray right here um, and then back here a whole tray of uh, beets that'll go in the ground, um, hopefully not too far from now, before it gets too hot. So obviously I've got a few fruit trees that are in pots. There's some elderberry, some figs. They're little um, trees. They're not very far along. So I'll probably grow them out in pots so I can take them in and out of greenhouses until they get uh, mature enough to be able to handle the winters here, even though we don't have harsh winters. Um, as I said earlier, uh, we've got, let's see, uh, lemon eucalyptus and a small this I just got this it needs to go in the ground um, cold hardy kiwi um, and of course a calamondin one citrus tree I don't have a lot obviously if I, one day I'll get a big greenhouse I want to get a greenhouse that will span from this wall all the way down to the end I'd actually build that greenhouse out uh, maybe I'll revive some or I'll recycle some windows or something one day, maybe next year. That'll maybe be a good next year project. So more trays of stuff that I've pulled out of the ground. Um, random trays. That once it gets later in the season, I just start throwing stuff in trays and just start growing whatever come whatever I feel like I need more of, what I need to fill fill spaces with. Um, so you know, a little bit of onions here, onion starts, some purple opal basil, some burdock. Um, some black cumin, some feverfew, just random herbs really in this tray. Um, back here you can tell I pulled these out, tomarillo and um, uh, roselle and let's see what else, uh, moringa, little moringa, those probably won't survive winter here. So just more stuff that I have growing back here, um, various squash, melons, herbs. Um, this is actually, uh, these are some experimental plants that I'll be putting in the ground. Lesser galangal, some ginger. I, I know that um, it gets too cold here, but I definitely want to experiment with some of the tough stuff. Um, the, this right here, um, these are sunchokes or Jerusalem artichoke. I'll probably plant those out in pots. I know they spread a lot. Anyways, I just want to see, show you what's growing here. I know a lot of you guys growing stuff have fascination to see what other people are growing or what other people are trying. A lot of what I do is experimental. Um, I would say that I do everything on a budget as much as possible so that I can save money so that I can just go and experiment and end up wasting money on experimental plants. Let's go um, next, let's actually go over to my food forest area. This is not my main vegetable garden, but this is where I'm going to be planting out most of my squash. And um, honestly, it's where I've been putting most of my effort into. I'd like to make this area full production as far as food goes and get as much out of the square footage here. Um, I am on five acres, but probably only about an acre, acre of the land is cleared, and I, I don't plan on clearing more land in the future. So this is a good example of my current method for planting. Uh, what I do is I pull back all of my mulch down to the bare dirt, which is starting to turn into nice pretty black dirt. And what I'll do is I'll come back with some compost and I'll fill this hole in. So there's probably about three or four inches of compost here, and then fresh topsoil dirt underneath that. I'll plant into this, so I'm actually planting into compost, not into mulch. So anyways, I made about 30 of these, and I planted them, or I planted a bunch of them out so far. Actually, I made about 60 of them, about 30 of them are planted out, and I just made 30 more today. And I'll just plant, interplant squash, um, pumpkins, and all kinds of stuff like that. 
in between each of these fruit trees just to make as much space use out of space as possible. Um, Want to do it, do as much growing, as much food production as possible here on my little um, property. Uh, so I'll just walk you out. I'll give you a little bit of a tour of the garden and I'll give you a little bit of a walk out. I've got a lot, a lot more work to do. Thank you for watching. If you get a chance, like and like this video and subscribe um, to the channel and I'll keep making more videos. I, don't, I need to get better at making videos. I spend enough time working in the yard and in the garden and growing stuff that I don't get as much time making videos as I'd like just because uh, it does take a lot of manual labor to get this stuff growing. So anyways, enjoy the view and I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.